first topic of the day, we're going to talk about uh, the Japan talk sector. So we got we got a lot of things going on. We got a uh, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation Two, mm. um, which is now playable in English. Oh man, yeah. Um, we got Dynasty Warriors Nine Online, the co-op <laughs> um, version of that that is launched. Uh, Will wanted to introduce a little bit more about his opinion on Koei and mm-hmm. how they are uh, kind of segueing from their oh, their core fanship and um, kind of turning into a company that is I don't know how would you describe would you that? Want to say pay attention maybe? Yeah, I I mean that's that's yeah, kind of yeah. The whole on thing. this channel, that's kind of you know that's kind of blasphemous, but you know, <laughs> I just want I want to hear that opinion as well. Um, I also wanted to talk about just a little bit about the anime Sword Art Online um, Alicization arc, the new Sword Art arc that has been airing. Um, just talk a little bit about that. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll talk about some Gundam stuff that's going on with the anime. Um, and then the Western Talk section, we got uh, all the BlizzCon recap that we're get, that we want to just get into because mm. Blizzard is you know one of those companies that we we valued growing up, and we just want to. We just want to talk more about it. So uh, let's go into the Japan talk stuff. So uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation. Battle what is your... Operation 2. Ooh. In English. Yeah. And I so I was pumped about that. So no, anyone can go to any Asian PSN. Make a PSN account. Doesn't matter. Hong Kong. Japanese. The game will be in complete English. What is the English option now? I fucking love the game. So tell me, yeah, tell me what your experience has been so far. For me, it's only well, been like tutorial, yeah. like kind of just like playing yeah. around with it. No, I, it's great. At first, I was ex- so it's obviously it's free to play, and I was expecting it to be kind of uh, you know kind of you know pay to win, you know. Yeah. But when I played it, it pretty much feel it. The controls, everything, it feels like double uh, eighty one, which was for PS three. Um, I mean, all around, it's just I've just enjoyed it. The there's a there's a ranked, which is typical in every competitive game now and then there's just quick match and um usually uh it doesn't matter like in ranked what I, one thing i actually did like in ranked was you can't have like friends play with you in that like it's strictly you know it's strictly just you just join by yourself so everyone's kind of like on an even playing field um and the suits relatively they don't level up but every suit has i don't know how you describe it um they go in tiers so there's a level one variant of Azaku level two variant of his eye and it go and you just simply gain credits from completing from winning or losing and you just go to the stores you buy more suits more then the, there's no pay to win at all and I, I don't know i really i really enjoyed it, it was that it was surprising <laughs> how much i enjoyed it so would but, you describe it as if you're going you know like let's say you're a long time series player mm. um you know there's there's obviously the different sub components of the gundam games like mm. you have the you know, you have the versus series, you have the, uh, you know, the versus titles that kind of play out kind of mm-hmm. similarly, and then you have, like, how would you describe, like, I know there was no, another that, one, Battle yeah. Operation Next, that came out. Yeah, and... no, this, as far as, like, the gameplay, it's it's wickedly slow, yeah. and that's, that sounds bad, but it's it's actually, it's incredibly, uh, it's slow paced, and it's rewarding if you team up with players that you're that you know that are on your that are on your side usually the games are so it's more squad based it's more squad based it's usually 4v4 or 5v5 and but the combat's much slower it's not Gundam versus where you know you're going all over the place like you know you know wickedly fast and one thing that i do like is if you're a fan of universal century is that it caters to just like universal century there's no you know age age <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's the, there's no age, no seed, nothing, and it's for the no most thunderbolt. Part, Come on, no thunderbolt. No, they uh they might put in suits from you know from that. Yeah, right. it, it's sticking just from Universal Century, and it's been pretty enjoyable. Like I said, there. Well, it, thought, it, yeah, because thunderbolts and the the use. Yeah, so. but no, then there's uh, it, it's more it's more about the, <coughs> it's more about grunt units, which is nice. People aren't going around with like Gundams and stuff. It's a lot of like you know, there's a lot of Zaku's, a lot of Doms, you know, Gelgu variants. Yakushikis, by the way. I don't. No, it's not no. in there yet. No, I don't think they put it in there yet. Damn. As for yeah, I, know, I, I think there's. There's the crazy the, Zeta double Zeta. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's not. It, it's just. It's so far. It's double O seventy nine stuff has been in there. That that's been. I think that's been about it. 
just 0079. Yeah, 0079, maybe. No Stardust memory, bit. nothing. Mo- yeah, maybe 0083, but it's but it's staying pretty. War in the pocket. War in the pocket. Yeah, there. Are, yeah, there is stuff from that. Yeah, there's Zaku Kai's in there. Great. But yeah, it's like I said, it's good. Especially since it's free to play, people just like I said, make account. It's simple enough, and just you know. Right yeah. So ju- just want to give a little value. Um, if you create a Japanese account, mm. um. You always want to make sure too is uh, I was running into this issue where you know Will kind of didn't have an issue, but I had an issue when I created a Japanese account. For some reason, when I was switching back, so you can download the game on the Japanese account, mm-hmm. and then you switch back to your normal account, and then you yeah. can play it like you know as normal. Right, so you don't have you, to play it on the Japanese right, account. Right, even and you don't even need you don't need PS Plus mm-hmm. to play it right. online. Yep. So that's perfect. So you could just kind of play it on your English account. Um, my issue was when I, when I was switching, it would have a lock. So mm. it would have a lock symbol, which means like I can't play it. What I had to do is I had to go onto my Japanese account and activate it as a primary PS4. Um, there's no, I don't think there's a limit for how many times you could do that, but you can literally just activate it as your primary PS4 on the Japanese account, and then you can just play it on your English account, no problems. So, um, if you're running into that issue, but yeah, go check it out. Um. You can go on the the Japanese store. You can go on the the Hong Kong mm-hmm. English store. You can go on pretty much any Asian store um, yeah. and download the game. And it in English. <laughs> yeah, and the it's fully thing. fully in English. Yeah, fully uh, in English. It's not yeah. the voice acting though is Japanese. Right? Voice acting, yeah, yeah it's vo- Japanese. But, but the English subtitle, the menus, everything. Every, yeah, the whole thing, items, everything. It's yeah. all 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 been translated. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So Dice Wars Nine online. Um, what have you, what are your thoughts? What are the thoughts on the co-op? It is out. Yeah, um, no, I, uh, We haven't really got a chance to play it. But... Yeah, no, I haven't really got a chance to play it. It's more just kind of, you know, news flowing through, just reading about it and watching other people have been doing it and stuff. I, I don't know, I, I appreciate Koei trying to put more effort into 9 instead of kind of leaving it as a dead game, even though it was, it, it's... It was not received well, and it's just not very... But I, I appreciate them trying to make it have co-op in it. But, I don't know. It's kind of like all I could really, you know... Yeah, I mean... It's, I don't know. I, I'm glad that they did put co-op in it. So now, so you can do it locally, or you can do it online. So that, like I said, that that's nice. I feel like even if the game is not that... If barren wasteland, it's like, well, you know, you can enjoy the barren wasteland with a friend now, just by, you know, riding around on your horses. So there is, yeah, there is that free component to it. Like, Koei's kind of done that in the past, where they kind of, you know, release, like, their base version. You know, they'll call it, like, Free Alliance or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, they kind of do that with, like, a certain titles. Like, I know they did that with Tokenin, and um, in the past, like, some Dynasty Warriors titles, but... Uh, they did it with nine, and they have the you know they have that component with it. So, um, it's a good entry, I guess. Like Dying Stories Nine is kind of a uh new entry, like you know, because it's like so different than what Dynasty Warriors has been. Um, it's yeah, it's for fans. It's not what Di- what people would expect of Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, which which kind of like goes into our next topic, where you know what has koei been doing like i feel like ever since muso all-stars like it's just mm. there's been some really weird things that they've yeah, been doing they, with their games they, i think it's their um it's them taking shortcuts i feel like is finally catching up to them and dynasty warriors 9 they tried something so new new move sets a lot of cloned move sets open world and it just they clearly just didn't figure stuff out with that so it, it just wasn't and yeah muso all-stars just once again it just it just was not good there weren't there weren't enough characters and things you know that's it yeah do you think they're kind of like seeing more or less like how they can make money versus how they can cater like to fans like i i feel like in a sense like they've had a lot of fan service s games like where muso all-stars has been kind of pulled one from each mm-hmm. series but yeah you know it it's not like warriors or g4 where warriors or g4 has a shit ton of characters but the thing is the dlc model for that kind of punishes you know mm. what people were expecting from the actual game because right. like what i was expecting was in addition to warriors or g3 
Yeah. Where Warriors Search the Ultimate had every single character that you can imagine. Mm Mm-hmm. All the content, just, yeah, and they just it, it, they they just add they just add to it. No, it's like all their games recently, probably from I remember we we mentioned it. I think it was One Piece, Pirate Warriors three, and Dragon Quest Heroes two were like their last like really good warrior game. Like that's that was it, and everything else now has been shortcuts and making things cheap, and now they're just trying to you know just simply penny pinching you. I just, you know, everything now is going to be a DLC. for costumes. DL, you know, DLC costumes, yeah. DLC weapons. Dynasty Warriors Nine. They they added original weapons that well that were original, like from Dynasty Warriors Eight, giving them back. Yeah. So now you have to pay for them. They um they have the season pass. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, but they had the first season pass. Now there's a second season pass that lasts a few months. So it's not like. It's not like your traditional, you know, like scummy season pass. This is like a worse or uh, you know variant of a season pass. But it's just for—is it for game modes too, or is it just like with the it's cosmetic? Cosmetics, and there's a few weapons, and it's like some like bonus stages that that are not like yeah. Not, it's not it's not groundbreaking stuff. I mean, pr- yeah, because previously, like you know, they would kind of just give that stuff away. Mm-hmm. Where and now I feel like they've kind of you know seeing what other developers can do and kind of like charge for that content um yeah. I, you know and the thing is with game modes is you know you, you mentioned bonus stages but like the actual warriors of Richie 4 base game is kind of empty yeah where you know they have the traditional campaign mm-hmm. the multiplayer component and like yeah like you uh, that's it and that's it. And like, yeah. War, meanwhile, Wars War Two Three, uh, you know, had Gauntlet. They had the the fighter mode. Mm-hmm. They had. Well, there were all these extra things. Like it, that. That's why to this day, Ultimate feels like it is a complete game. Koei should have just taken Ultimate and added in the story of Four, right? And then that was it. And they they should have just they should have just simply put, but they took shortcuts. They clear. Uh, Warriors War Two Four was simply. It was just a, uh, it was just a simple cash grab. They knew everyone was going to buy it, and it was typed simply to like recover losses due to what happened with Dynasty Warriors Nine. You know, that was it. That's what happened. Yeah, the the savagery of Koei to kind of do that, and like, and meanwhile, you got like, you know, because like they are a company that we do admire. Yeah. And there's a lot of titles that like. I would like Token and Two, mm-hmm. Attack on Titan, like the Berserk game. Yep. You know, uh, even back then, like you know, when the PS4 was just coming out, like you know, all the you know Samurai Warriors Four, Warriors RG Three Ultimate, like yeah. Warriors of Arsenal, like Arsenal Warriors, and all that stuff. Like they are a, a company that is capable of content, and the fact that they're kind of you know now that they're deciding like you know they they've established a practice with their customers and now that they're deciding to skimp is just like kind of strange um mm-hmm. you know as a business like you know i don't really get it like if they could afford to do it in the past like i don't know where the cut is you know it could be something that we don't know <laughs> no i yeah i know, you know? no they they they're simply just trying they're they're taking content out even if it's even if it's just costumes or you know anything, they used to just be in the base game, like even Warriors Arch Three. They would have out. They would have like character cosmetics from like it could be from Dynasty Warriors Seven down to like you know five or four. Now all now all that's paid for. Um, it's just you know, as a fan, it's just it's just sad seeing that, and you know, it's just. It, you know, it's just disappointing. So where's like the you know, where's the cutoff for you? Like Koei's not gonna get my money anymore. <laughs> right now, I mean, they're not getting they're not they're not getting my money for Warriors or Archie Four until if they come out with a you know uh, see what they come out with as far as for an expansion or you know an ultimate or hyper version, you know whatever you want where that just has more replay value. If it has a gauntlet mode, um, I can do without the cosmetics. You know, I could technically you could do, but if they if they just add, just add in more 
replay value, you know, more balanced gameplay than than I would consider. But right now, I mean, I haven't. Koei's just been disappointing. I haven't gotten uh, a lot of their recent stuff uh, in, in a while, just because of just because how their practice has been. It's just not. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, it kind kind of sucks. I mean, like Koei is still again. Like, don't want to keep circling back to it, but Koei is still a company that, like, you know we admire and it's yeah. just it's just disappointing it's just disappointing seeing them t- take this take this route instead of instead of doing little things now they think they can get away with doing just like a lot of things. and they've had huge success like neo was a success and neo like, was great everything was everything has been pretty successful like you know i i seem to remember you know them coming out with like what knights of azure and like all this different stuff like mm-hmm. on, yeah. on the ps4 like there's and then even like on the xbox stuff like PC releases, like they're getting money yeah, they've on the been PC really trying now. with that stuff, yeah. And it's just you know, hopefully they have a you know, an ultimate like not an ultimatum, but hopefully they have that like motives that are can be clear explained mm-hmm. in the in the future. I mean, it, it sounds like minute shit that we're complaining about, but like honestly, it's like from a company that's that's <laughs> established that's past practice, it's yeah. Like, I don't know. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, it does seem. It does seem like minute stuff, but it really. It really isn't because it. It does impact the gameplay. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's the thing. Just you know, alienating and mistreating fans, pretty much taking advantage. I just say taking advantage of. That's that's really what that's what they're doing. Yikes! Taking advantage. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, this is the. <laughs> this is the topic I've been waiting for. The. Uh, this <laughs> the Sword Art Online anime. Um, we are finally. Yeah, I just want to take a little segue into some anime Jesus discussion. Christ. Yeah, what is going on with this show? So we got some. You know, if, if anyone's been following the Sword Art Online no. series, no. <laughs> besides me, for some reason, I'm their biggest fan. Um, it's not so, even for the right reasons. Sword Art Online <laughs> is a series I hold near and dear to my heart. He does. Um, it's. <laughs> <laughs> The um the funny thing about this show is just the oh god I don't even know where to begin the the sheer humor of the show like the sheer fact that and like and trust me I'm not we're not the only people in this in here to kind of dig on this show but <laughs> I have such a unique experience with it because I I follow everything. Like I literally, like literally, like I can show you, like books, like I have books, like I I won't show you now, but I have books, books, like literal literal novels, like of the show, like trees were killed for this, <laughs> like I am I am just so in it, and it's just so funny to see where this is going. So now we have. After the movie, like, the, we had that original story, the movie, that was in theaters, and now we're kind of, you know, going into a new arc mm-hmm. where it's continuing from the the original first two seasons, and, you know, the Alicization arc has been being written by Reki Kawahara, the, cre- the series creator, for, for quite a while, and it's, and it's actually, you know, in novel form, it's finished, and now it's, like, getting an anime, and now it has an animation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are up to episode five now, just to put it in perspective of this uh, Alicization series. Previously, Sword Art Online has been broken down into they have the arcs like twelve episode arcs, right? So they'll have like a fir- their first season was kind of like you know split up into twenty four episodes. Uh, then they have the you know the season two and all that. Mm-hmm. So um, now we're getting into kind of a long form series where Alicization is like the longest in the series. Um, it, they've been ex- anticipating like more than 48 episodes for yeah. this and uh the premise is after all this shit happens in the virtual world um we have the <laughs> the main villain uh death gun uh kind of you know we've established the actual um human form of that um and he has attacked Kirito in the real world. And Kirito, if you're not familiar, is the black swordsman. Um you know, I would I would I would I would argue that he's uh more powerful than guts. So 
This is all. This is complete the, sarcasm. He, this is all. Please, yeah. It is. It is some of the most b- bullshit writing. I. Uh, it... So, where are we now? So where? So put to put it into perspective, we have two new characters, Yu-Gi-Oh and Alice, and they are in this world where we can't seem to establish whether it's virtual or whether it's not. But what we know is that there's a new technology that Kirito knows about called the Soul Translator, and what this is is essentially. He spends time in a in a world where previously, if you spend time in this world, no memories can be created and remembered back in the the real world. So you spend time in this virtual world where it's literally like an alternate life. And now what we found is that he's been sedated in real life and now he has gone all the way back into this to this world. So this world is essentially a fantasy world where everyone has a different task Mm -hmm. and these tasks um to say kind of dictate what your life is in this world what your responsibilities are so kirito when he gets into this world meets yugio and yugio is a a a woodcutter where his sole purpose is to cut down the demon tree and the demon tree has not been cut down for hundreds of years there's been hundreds of axe cutters before him now, <laughs> now Kirito brings his sword skills into this world, yeah, and sword. they decide to chop down the tree with the with sword. Because, you know, that works so well. <laughs> but they did it. And they did it. And, you know, in order to, you know, put more emphasis on Kirito as the overpowered character, he is kind of the plot driver for this world. So, previously, you know, with Sword Art Online, like, it's like nothing can get done without his presence. Like, you know, there the game progresses because he is able to be a solo player and kind of just beat the fucking system and kind of you know go through the whole thing. Doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, it's the same with the second seat. Like he kind of just like has a vendetta to rescue Asana, and he's able to do it with his bullshit. And the bullshit meter is kind of going up where we've had Gun Gale now, and he kind of just fights with a sword in a gun world and <laughs> the same shit with Alfheim, you know um Alfheim kind of took it away from kirito where they focus more on asana and yuki's relationship which yuki has aids um <laughs> if you haven't already seen will's video for that uh on our channel <laughs> but uh if you want to check that out go to youtube.com slash dex 30 show go, <laughs> go over there and type in yuki has aids but um now we're getting into a world where you know it, Kirito's bullshit is progressing the story again. Uh, the pre, the latest episode has had to do with um, him kind of in the real world now, and the 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 cast known as the uh, you know the the what, what what do you call it like the you know um, the the girls. Oh, what, oh wait, you mean like the harem? And shit yeah, and the that? harem. Yeah, so the harem is kind of in the in the real world, kind of trying to find his physical body. Uh, um, and there's like more technology based with this. So, um, with the movie, um, they've talked about like the, you know the augmented reality, and they've kind of gone into that. Uh, in this, they're kind of talking about the Soul Translator. Um, this technology is you know something that I, I guess that's why the series is so popular because this technology is so. Uh, I guess, like, you parallel with the real world <laughs> where, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality are kind of coming into play. But they... <laughs> Reki Kawahara... Yeah, he previously had... Excel, he previously wrote Excel World, which talked about, like, kind of that rudimentary, like, after the fact, like, after Sword Art Online, like, this is the technology where you're gonna, like, burst Link into people's fucking brains and Link start and... All this shit. Like none of this should, none of this should even have like who's ever making this technology. Like, all right, stop. Yeah. Just stop. Like this is damaging. Yeah. So uh, the thing games. is, like the thing is with Sword Art is like it's the actual technology portion of it mm-hmm. is is I guess like what you can call the most like well written. Mm-hmm. Everything else about it is cash grab. Like Reki Kawahara is previously soul trying to soul monetize these fucking characters and to get the harem to sell them as many novels and games as possible. Mm-hmm. This entire series has been such a fucking consumer centric. Yeah, and you know, 
trying to get fucking people in the West to consume and the actual the actual anime has become such a joke that now that we have like this more serious series Mm -hmm. it it's almost you can't take it you can't take it you can't and 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 the writing is still still fails with it because how are you how are you to tell me that someone with a sword can cut down a tree and then how are you to tell me like just all this other shit like the fact that they can't just like fucking shake him like wake up (laughs) Like, get out of there. No, it, 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 I don't know anyone who sees Sword Art and treats it like, you know, gets into a real conversation. Like, oh, you know, in Gundam, why would they do... People are watching it, it is a troll show. It is. No one yeah. watches it because like, oh, wow, what's going on with this? No, what's it's... Going on with these, what's going on with these characters? I mean, but do you know what's sad? It's Even cookie cutter. For... It's very just like mindless popcorn but show. For a harm series yeah there are this is what's sad it's like there are better ones but it's not pure the thing is it's not pure pure harm harm. yeah but that's thing it's like if it became one or the other it probably would be a b anime that would be crap to watch it's just crap because it already is just that's but that's why in japan they have like they have the segments like so in japan they have like the fucking you know anime segments on air and like japan is has treated Sword Art as, like, one of those B-rated fucking bullshit series where it could just gets shown at 2 in the morning, like, almost like with Toonami, like, where we would fucking see these, like, weird-ass shows at 3 o'clock, like, fucking Zatch Bell, like, oh, just this okay, trash, yeah. like, this literal trash that airs, and Japan kind of treats it the same way, but the thing is, is, like, why this series is so popular? <laughs> yeah. Beyond me. I don't know where it's, I, I really, no, I, I, I don't, I don't know where it's coming from because I, like I said, if it was other harm series that were like there's there's Tenshi Muyo, Love Hina, those I feel like are legitimately right. they're good animes, but like this is like garbage, and you can't even debate it because it's like some people say, oh I really like Gundam Seed, it's like I I think Gundam Seed is trash, but I can see why. But at you least it like... was like written for children in Japan to kind of. But I know. can see why people would yeah. like Seed. I can't see people like, yeah, man, you know, I don't know. Kiritu is just so badass, man. Really? I, when I see Kirito, I see myself. Really? That's really that. No, no it's it, it, they're just it's a, it, it's just a crap. It's just a crapshoot. Like it really is. People people are watching it because it's like you know you watch a dumpster fire. And, and it's like, like why do you want to like? It's like okay, it's dark to say, but like like you want to see a car crash. It's like. That's, well, yeah, that's I mean, that's like... that's what I think with Life is Strange, but that's for another episode. <laughs> so when I when I finish Life is Strange, I will I will go into that. But um, and I'm not, and I've already finished Life is Strange. I'm talking about the second one. Mm-hmm. So I trust me, there's a lot of fire content for that <laughs> okay. coming up. But uh, with Sword Art, I, if you got to look at the demographic for it, it's like I don't even know what the demographic I, is. It's I feel like it's like I feel like it's like young women too, like the young teenagers in america like kind of follow this oh, shit. The young women you know america, like yeah, it's okay. like it's like the that anime club bullshit mm-hmm. like in high school where it's like <laughs> you know it's just one of those series where it's like it, it's just like you know very like i don't know teenage angst bullshit i don't want to watch some dragon ball super and get out of my face <laughs> like I that's just, like <laughs> people watch it because it's crap yeah that's that that's why so, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what it, it really. It's yeah, it's just it's crap. How it's making money, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the games are like the games are very like for Bandai to distribute these. It's like it's very like subpar with like other. They're they're, they're pretty yeah yeah they're 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 pretty subpar. The, the, there's yeah yeah they're yeah. <laughs> just I don't know. But it's funny to follow, and like I'm sure if you follow this podcast, I will talk a lot more into that and uh, different like funny things that we find in the in the industry, and mm-hmm. you know, because there's more to talk about with it. Yeah. But 